from Texas. This is Heath Hipple with Bucks Fishing. I'm about to go to Colorado with my family and I'm going to take a lightweight spinning rod and try and catch some rainbow and brown trout. And so I'm going to be tying up a few bugs, a few jigs, I call them stringer bugs, on what's called the AR-20 trout shank. It's a light wire shank um, and I'm going to tie three and I'm going to, I'll show you how it's done and so you can see how these work and maybe pick up some for yourself and tie on them. And so the first, this, this little shepherd hook at the back here, that accepts a, a hook. And so you start with the hook. And so the first one, I'm actually not going to tie anything on the hook. I'm just going to slip it over there. Just like that. And this hook, these we're tying on gamakatsu these are glow bug hooks in size six and what you want you want a you want a straight shank hook okay and these are going to be hook point down and so and if anybody has any questions while while we're doing this just let me know and so i'm using i'm using this mongoose vise because it holds these little components the best and so I'm going to tie a simple woolly bugger pattern in olive to start. The thread, this is called, it's Vivas 140. It's a little thinner. It's a little thinner than the thread I normally use because we're working on a smaller, you know, we're working with smaller components. And so it helps, helps to use something thinner. It's really, it's really strong though. So I'm wrapping thread along this shank which is a good idea when you're tying anything because it keeps materials from slipping. And so as I get closer to the end, I'm going to physically close that, that gap of that shepherd hook and kind of tie it closed. Okay. I'm tying that closed. And I'm tying a knot and so I'm going to take that out real fast so what you have here I've tied that loop closed and there's a trailing hook right there okay and so a woolly bugger is the first thing I'm going to tie I'm going to use crosscut rabbit I think this is olive variant um, and so I'm going to tie that in right at the back and I'm going to tie two or three two or three revolutions. You, you cut at an angle, cut at an angle when you're tying with cross cut to make it easier to tie in. See, I cut that at an angle. I want the hairs to go back that way. So I lay the rabbit right here and it makes it easier to tie in. Okay. So I'm going to move, move that thread this way and I'm going to start wrapping that crosscut rabbit and I'm going to once, twice, three, I'm going to go one more time, pull wrap so I'll have a big bushy tail back there. back this way cut there So now we have the tail. We have the tail, it's nice and bushy, and there's the hook back there. Okay. So we need to find get it back in the vise. So this is a really simple, simple pattern. And next we have um, some olive. Actually, I'm going to tie in the weight. Okay, so 
Before we're going to Estes Park, where we're going to Estes Park, there um, we're fishing the Big Thompson River. I fish it both above Lake Estes and below Lake Estes. Above Lake Estes, it is shallow. And so I'm gonna tie this in 16th ounce. I'm gonna use one of the 16th ounce bugs belly weights. And I'm gonna put that weight right in here. And I'm gonna tie it on the under on the underside. And these belly weights have a groove in there, and they sit right there, but as you can see the shank is smaller than the groove and so it'll it'll slip and so what we're going to do we're going to take some diamond braid and we're going to tie that we're going to tie that onto the shank it's going to take make that shank thicker and make it easier to tie in that uh that belly weight and so i'm just i'm wrapping i'm wrapping the diamond braid on the shank And I'm gonna go back one more time right on top. Okay. So now, now that's gonna sit. It's gonna sit right there and it won't slide. take this back here and I'm going to tie in this is olive crystal flash chenille actually it's the trout thumper chenille and olive and it's got a little bit of UV so it sparkles pretty nicely tie that in right there and I'm simply going to wrap it forward tie it in at the end there. Okay. Those hairs out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna do something right here. This is this is really bushy, and so I'm going to bring my thread back here, do a little half hitch, and bring it back there to kind of make it a little less less bushy. up that area right there by the eye. Okay. So this is a really simple pattern. It's not the prettiest, but it imitates a lot of what a lot of what rainbow and brown trout eat in rivers. Um, and at 16th ounce, it won't, it won't sink very fast. And I think I'll be able to get some bites. But we want the next one to be prettier, that's for sure. But that's a really, really simple pattern. Really simple pattern. So that's number one. Whoops. 
right. Number two, we're going to tie a little bit better looking, a little bit more complicated, and what I think will be a little bit more effective pattern. This is going to be a same same type of woolly bugger, but with uh, rubber legs. I'm going to need to switch to black thread. So these are called AR20 AR20 trout shanks because I developed I developed a pattern fishing over the years on the Arkansas River. That's what the AR stands for. On the Arkansas River where where I where I fish for trout a 20 inch your, uh, a 20 inch trout is a trophy like that's a that's at the upper end of the range you would catch that's what um that's what the goal was and so that's why it's called an ar20 trout shank because it's i developed it while um while trying to catch a 20 inch fish on the arkansas river now i got really close on a rainbow a couple years ago really close to 20. I say really close because I landed him quickly. He was really green. He was really live. He was, you know, bouncing around and I just didn't want to, I didn't want to hold him to, to get a proper measurement. Um, he was flopping around. I wanted him to swim away. I wanted to be hundred percent sure that he'd swim away healthy. And so he kind of flopped out of my hands. I have a couple of pictures of him, but we, I didn't get to measure him, but he was a, a solid fish. I think he was probably really close to 20, but it's one of those where I didn't get a good measurement on him. Because, like I said, I wanted to make sure that he swam away. Okay, this is some UV, UV crystal flash. I tied in a couple of strands right there. And this is a, this is, actually, let me go. No. Hold on, let's see. I'm going to tie a zonker, a little piece of zonker tail, black zonker tail on this. If I can find one real quick. That's purple. And yeah, we'll stick with a micro. It's a little piece of micro rabbit tail. Tying everything on top of the shank so that I don't want it to foul. And so it's a good little tail. So now we're gonna get that AR20 trout shank, put it in there, and then move it here, we're, and we'll close it up. So this is a little fancier version of what we just tied. It'll be it'll be prettier. Close, close that up. Okay, we're gonna take that same micro rabbit. Palmer, we're gonna Palmer that a few times right here at the end. Okay. 
this is going to create a little bushier tail with a with that trailing flash also so I want the hairs to point towards the back so I kind of help them start going in that direction before I palmer or I wrap the hairs so it's one two we're going the right line there's three So I'm going to tie that off. Okay, on this one, we're going to do the same thing. We need to wrap this diamond braid on the shank. Let me get a little bit more. To make it easier for that. Easier for that, uh, the belly weight to stick. I'm gonna test this. this. I don't think I needed as much diamond braid as I put on there last time, so I'm gonna. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. So there's the weight that's in the middle. Now on this one, right now I'm thinking about if I'm gonna put the legs like right here and right here, or right here and in the middle there. And I think I'm gonna do those two places. And so I have some rubber legs here that I cut into, I cut into, uh, Cut in half. Move the thread right here. Okay. This is the chenille. This isn't as bushy as the other stuff. And I'm going to tie this in right here at the back. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to tie on these some legs on either side right here. and they're gonna be facing backwards. When I tie them in, and then I'm gonna make them stand out when I wrap that flash, you'll see. So I double them up. I'll tie them on this middle rib of this belly weight. So woolly booger can imitate a nymph, like a little insect. It can imitate a little, a little bait fish. It can imitate lots of things. And so on that first one, I didn't tie any rubber legs. I'm going to keep it simple. And the more I look at that one, that one's kind of rough looking. <laughs> Hopefully this will be, <laughs> this will look better. And, oops. So if you want to make, make a woolly bugger a little bit more buggy, you tie some rubber legs. I'm 
move the thread up here to the front. <clears throat> and you're gonna you're about to palmer the sh the chenille. So this is a little trick to keep the legs out of the way while you do it as you go. So you just make light thread wraps. Oops. To keep them out of the way. Same ones, same with the ones back here. Separate the hairs from it. Light thread wrap right there. Light thread wrap here. Okay. So I'm gonna make two wraps right there and I'm gonna release the first set of legs. Okay. And so as I, as I wrap, I'm gonna make sure that I'm happy with the placement. See those legs, how they're pointed slightly back and slightly out, that's where I want them. So I'm happy with that, so I'll keep going. And as I get closer to, as I get to these other ones, release those. I want them to go in the same general direction. do one more thing on this one I just decided okay okay we're gonna put some eyes on the front of this one make it look even more buggy happier than this one than the first one that's a pretty good profile that's and that's a, honestly a little bit big for the water I'm fishing but maybe it'll attract maybe it'll attract a big fish all right final one we're gonna tie a we're gonna tie my favorite pattern we're going to tie baby rainbow trout. We're going to use five millimeter diamond fish eyes. Clear. Bodkin or a little hook point to get these eyes off of the Oops. 
should I didn't get a bodkin out. get it towards the middle before you there we go one side a bodkin is just a basically a, a straight pin on it with a handle and it, it comes in handy with stuff like this I just didn't get it out beforehand This is a baby rainbow trout. And this is the one I have best luck with every summer. And it was just about the best on the Arkansas also. Let me get some. A couple of strands of UV pink. And just about everything you tie, some trailing flash is super useful. Double it up. Cut it again. Rainbow trout or olive have olive backs. This is a zonker. It's a zonker piece. Make sure the hook eye is clear. I don't want that. We're going to close up that, close up the, the shank. We're going to tie the eyes in and the weight, and then we're going to come back to the back. Do some figure eights. I think I've left myself enough room there. All right. Do some diamond braid just like we did before. So we can make sure that we have enough. Uh, we want that weight to stick. We're going to use <clears throat> an eighth ounce weight this time. 
a little bigger. And we're going to push it right up against those eyes. So now, now we're ready. Okay. The back is a zonker strip. And so we're going to tie that in right here. But you see how there's a little hump with the trout shank when we want it to lay flat. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the end of the zonker strip. And we're going to cut it right in the middle. Just like that, okay? I'm gonna separate the hairs. Move it a little bit further down. If you look at the top, see, it's separated right there, so it's going to lay flat. Okay. All right. So that's the back. Now, baby rainbow trout have white bellies, so... Micro rabbit. So you see what I'm, there's the micro rabbit piece. I'm gonna bend the hairs back. I'm gonna tie it in right here. And you'll see why I bent those hairs back in just a second. Tie it in the middle. There we go. <clears throat> I tied in this end because I don't want the rabbit strip, the, I don't want it to trail back there, but I want the hairs to be pointed back there. Okay. So that way, when we're done, we pull it forward and the hairs are trailing back that way and it gives it that white contrasting belly. Okay. So... All right. All right, we're gonna tie, <clears throat> this is called lateral scale. It's a wide flash material. This is pink because baby rainbows have some pink along their sides. So I cut a piece. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to fold this piece in half. And I'm going to tie it on either side. Okay? And so I fold the piece in half. And then I separate, all right, I put it. <clears throat> I fold it around the thread basically and so and so that, that's going to lay right there I'm going to tie the other one on the other side That's directly opposite. I'll just turn it right.
right on the other side. Okay. Now we got now we're gonna tie a collar. Rainbow trout on the sides, they have spots, and there's this um this all this this is called a micro pulsator strip. This is a groovy color with white, yellow, and olive, and it is black barred. And so it actually works really well to imitate the coloring of a baby rainbow trout on the side. That's going to be our collar. I'm going to cut it. <clears throat> cut it like that. And I'm going to lay that right there. Tie that in. <clears throat> so I'm going to wrap this twice. Once. Twice. Okay. Separate the hairs on top. I'm gonna make several of these wraps so that it doesn't doesn't come loose when I let go to cut this to cut that rabbit. Cause that would not be good. Okay. So as I begin tying it in, I'm gonna make sure. I want to make sure that's tied in so it doesn't slip off. Okay. So we have a we have a collar. I'm going to tie some chenille around the eyes. This is that bushy stuff that we used before, but I think if I use it sparsely, I think it'll I think it'll work fine. Didn't even do figure eights around the eyes because that would not look, we wouldn't have room to tie in everything else. So I'm still going to go around. Okay. Now, turn it over. This is the bottom. Look, I'm going to separate. Separate these hairs and I'm going to bring that belly piece forward. Now I'm going to bring the zonker, the top piece, forward, but I'm going to separate those hairs first.
before I put head cement on there. I probably should have only done one revolution of this, of that middle of that uh, micro rabbit strip. I probably should have just done one revolution of the collar, but you can still see the flash. And then I should have used a little less less bushy chenille around the eyes but I'm just going to trim that so that you can see those eyes but as you're as I'm bringing that through the water it'll get a little bit slimmer and it'll look like a you know a meaty version of a of a baby rainbow So let's put some uh, head cement on. All right, I'm gonna hang this real quick right there. So. let it dry so there's the first a little woolly booger and that's admittedly that's kind of ugly but you can see the concept tying palm ring some rabbit right there with a trailing hook and then this looks better to me um, the rubber legs the eyes and a, a bushy tail and then the baby rainbow there. So those are three ways to use the AR-20 trout shanks. Um, you know, fishing in streams for, you could use this stuff in streams for smallmouth, but rainbows, it really helps with putting small hooks like a you know size six or smaller, small hook at the end of a shank. Um, so that's AR-20. I hope you guys will pick some up um, in the store, experiment with them. Um, super useful for tying little streamers. You can also tie flies with these. Catch you later.